Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it was very, very interesting, very balanced, I would say, introduction to our discussion. And um, I agree in many points with Professor Overy. As of, first of all, I agree with the statement that the um, attitude to the communist changed uh, very much in recent 20 years. And I agree also with the statement that the um, Black Book of Communists was probably the turning point. I remember when I, um, directly after the book was published, I had a seminar in my university in Bremen, northern part of Germany. Um, and most of my students uh, uh, were tried, tried to defend the communism. There was always this attitude. I remember the time before the book was published that uh, many of my uh, German colleagues, historians, said, okay, this, uh, you cannot compare directly uh, uh, national socialism and, uh, and communism and Red Army was uh, liberated, uh, liberated Europe and, and so on. When I make a, a seminar 10 years later about communism and, and national socialism and fascism, um, there was not such an attitude. There was, uh, I think, for the generation of the young people who are in the 20s, this, uh, you know, uh, there were two evils. There are probably differences between them, but they are actually the distance themselves from them. Um, uh, so, so it's change. It has changed. Uh, for me, it was interesting also the motive uh, in your paper when you distinguish actually the memory of Western as a former Western allies from German and Austrian memory. Because um, I am also now involved in the European politics and I always ask myself actually how is in the European level who influenced the picture image of the Second World narration, who has, uh, to say it in German, Deutungshoheit yeah, in, in European um, Union or in this uh, very different. Um, when I say, would say something about Polish narration, they would say, uh, um, uh, also you want against it. You say we cannot compare a national socialism uh, and uh, communism directly. I would say, but we cannot avoid to compare, as especially as a poor. We, 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 we cannot, as, a, as you probably know, the more hot debate now in Polish, in Poland, historical debate, is actually, it's not among professional, professional historians, but it's, it's a, yeah, public professional historians, but many publicists, and, and, and this is about, you know, uh, should we actually 39 go with Hitler to Moscow and not to be allies of uh, our, I would say, treacherous, <laughs> partly treacherous allies of, of the Western power because we, of course, we paid a, a high price of division of Poland expulsion and, and so the strength of our country and, uh, you know, slavery till 18. 89. So, so we, we actually, and you pointed as a rightly out that it is a continu continuation in the history of resistance. And now the heroes for the po young Polish generation are so, so called caste soldiers, as it, uh, 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 mostly soldiers of uh, former soldiers of home army who struck against uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet still the 50s sometimes till beginning of 60s. And, um, and uh, to today, as a some historian, uh, we are now this exhumation of the bodies of some of, some of the heroes like Pilecki and so on, because they were buried uh, secretly. And now after 25 years of freedom, we just remember what happened to this uh, uh, hero of Polish resistance in both resistance against against Nazis and against the Soviets. And, uh, and one of the historians said, I, I would say put it rightly, that it, it was probably this in the late 40s, beginning of, um, of 50s, that it was the next Polish national rising, which actually was bigger when we compare with the, let's say, uh, no, uh, uh, January rising uh, 19, uh, 
1860-64. So it's a, it's, it's a Polish memory, but uh, I wanted also to give you an ex example why I don't think that the historization, you, you mentioned, it's, it's not probably possible, and, uh, and that also we notice all the changes. There's a, especially in the recent times, once again, uh, we can observe attempts to revive the classic, I would say, the classic post-war narration about uh, Soviet army as liberator and, and so on. As a, the, the example would be um, exhibition, which was organized show, uh, show in um, European Parliament um, at the end of April, organized by, by MEP from Czech Republic, Izzy Mastalka. Uh, it was opened up with high-ranking Russian diplomats, uh, and the title was The Way to the Joint Victory of Nazism from Stalingrad to Prague. And uh, it's interesting to, to read on the, on the pages of the Russian mission to the European Union, yeah, how yeah, about these uh, heroic times. Uh, uh, this project is a part of public diplomacy, Volgograd, twin cities uh, in the United Kingdom, Poland, France, and Czech Republic. Members of the European Parliament, civil society, academia has taken part in preparation. The victory of Soviet troops in Stalingrad in February 1943 marked a turning point in the World War II, set the hearts of millions of people alight with hope and admiration, and so on. And you, 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 you could see at this, uh, this exhibition that uh, Stalingrad was uh, uh, peaceful, uh, uh, developing, uh, rapidly developing industrial city in, uh, in the 30s, uh, 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 packed uh, uh, between Stalin and Hitler was mentioned also only in a, you know, a, it was a page of Izviestia from this time. There was no, no word about, uh, let's say, aggression against Finland, occupation of Baltic states, deportation of, of Poland, and so on. And it was shown in Strasbourg European Parliament. And the quest of European Parliament just uh, uh, give uh, permission to show this, uh, this exhibition. Um, we react with the Poles, you know, a group of conservative and reformers who we reacted uh, quite um, emotionally against this uh, exhibition, but my, our colleagues from England and Germany firstly didn't understand <laughs> why we are so, uh, so outraged. So it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it shows then why it's uh, difficult as a to, 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 uh, yeah, to proceed to historization. Yeah? Because um, I would say it is still both Nazi regime and uh, uh, um, are part of the politics and the, the, the Soviets. Historical na narration is a part of, of, of current politics. And the uh, commemoration rituals are, I think, very important, uh, uh, very important for contemporary contemporary yeah, uh, foreign po politics. And I just also read in the Stern uh, German magazine, very interesting um, the article with somebody, one of the uh, um, chief redactor of this, uh, of this uh, German magazine uh, wrote a letter to the Russian friend comparing suffering, German and Russian suffering but on the end uh, uh, said, uh, I cannot, uh, you give us our country back. And I cannot imagine commemoration, celebration of the 25th anniversary of a unification of Germany without Russian participation. I say from my Polish perspective, as to see also that uh, today more pro-Soviet and pro-Russian sentiments are East Germany. And it is uh, something which uh, I cannot, uh, after living many years, uh, more than 20 years in, in Germany, I cannot really mm, understand. Yeah, so it's my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments.